I don't, man, to be honest with you, I don't know what it was the last time. I don't know if it was because it was the biggest fight card in UFC history. It was in New York. It was just the whole hype thing. I don't know, man. You got good days and you got bad days, and dadgum if it didn't land on a not-so-good day for me. And uh, But this go-around, man, my mind's right. I'm feeling good. I'm not going to hold anything back uh, this Saturday. So uh, I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. How much did your approach change? I mean, after having 25 minutes with him, I know you said you didn't feel like you were yourself that night, but as far as game plan, did you feel like what you came into the fight is the right way to beat him, or did you make some adjustments? Oh, always making some adjustments. Always going back and make some adjustments. Uh, what I did out there, I mean, you guys saw half of the arsenal that I throw. I didn't throw nearly the things that I normally do, which is a good thing going to this next fight because he hasn't seen everything I got. And um, like you said, I wasn't switching sides. I wasn't throwing the hands, wasn't working the angles. So going back to the gym, making sure that I do that this Saturday. My mind's right, which is the biggest part. And uh, I'm just ready to throw down. Do you expect him to use his wrestling more this time around? I do expect that. You know, I know you know, going that last, that last fight, uh, he ended up taking me down in the first round with a lazy kick. More my fault than, than him shooting in for a sweet double or a single leg, you know. He ended up catching my leg and ended up getting me down. But I do feel like he's going to be more aggressive going this, uh, in the beginning of this fight, looking for that takedown. Steve, do you feel like you can win um, because of the decision versus him? Do you get to go for that knockout? Oh, definitely. You know what? I'm, my goal Saturday is to not leave it in the judges' hands. And, of course, it's a little easier said than done going against the welterweight champion. I mean, he's, he's there for a reason, right? So all I can do is go out there and have some fun and do what I know I can do and making sure I'm doing it out there that night. Are you willing to risk getting knocked out to get the knockout to you know what? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, yeah, it would be awesome. You know what? But I don't go out there looking for it. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I just visualize my hand raised with that belt around my waist. Are you looking forward to just being done with Tyron, having had to focus on him for so long? To be honest with you, I'm having a blast doing this. I don't know if he is or not. It, sounds, it doesn't seem like he is, but I'm having a good time, man. I mean, this is why we do what we do, man, for this kind of rivalry, for, you know, the hype of it. And, and um, of course, I've, I've, I've always shown respect to my opponents. I'm never the type of guy to talk crap because, you know, i got 600 kids back home watching every move I make. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for the next chapter, the next opponent after this one. So that's why I'm going to go out there and give it all I got this Saturday. How many versus on time? Describe this rivalry to Tyrone. I, I mean, it seems like to me he's more stressed out than I am. You know, he's, he's a little disappointed in, in the decision and uh, how everything was going. And I knew he was talking about after, the, uh, after our last fight, he was talking about fighting other people, Conor McGregor, George St. Pierre, even going up weight class fighting Bisbing. But I'm like, you know, wait a second, you know, we just tied. And for me, as if I was a champion, I couldn't let that down. I could not move on from that, you know? I wouldn't feel like I was, I was champion. So anyway, when you tie, you always run it back. So I had to poke at him a little bit on social media to get him to do it. And of course, he, I think he said he was, he was actually going to do it, just kind of hype it up a little bit, you know? Do you follow the questions on Tyron? I seem to be your mentality, the questions on him, not you. Well, it just seems like to me, with all the stuff that's been going, he's been talking about on social media. I just hope that he, you know, his mind's right for Saturday. I want to fight the best, and I know things have been brought up in some of his conversations. I just, I just hope that he's mainly focused on the fight. That way, I am facing the best Tyron Woodley come Saturday. Like you said, you seem like you're really enjoying this, where he's taking it much more personally. Why do you think he is taking the rivalry much more personally? I don't know, man. I mean, some people they, uh, they, uh, they get into it a little bit more. I mean. Um, they have to they have to hate the guy or dislike the guy or not respect the guy before they walk out there I'm not saying he doesn't respect me, but uh, They just got to do that to, to pump themselves up for the fight. I'm just not that guy. I don't know man I, I, I just, I'm, I'm here. I'm blessed to be here. I'm just I'm here to have fun, man. That's it I know you always say fighting's not your job teaching kids is, but I mean if you're the UFC champion Does that mindset change a little bit? It, it's gonna have to change a little bit, you know I mean, I know there's a lot of responsibility that comes with champion and uh, I may not spend as much time with my students back home, but my plan is to be there for them, you know what I mean? And uh, if I can, I will. But um, uh, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's just it. That's it. Is it easy for you to be free on the cage once it's time for you to be creative? Is that an easy place for you to get to? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Once I step out there, uh, unlike my last fight, I, I normally get out there. If you watch the Johnny Henders fight, the Ellenberger fight, the Warren McDonald fight, I was just having fun out there. Of course, the nerves always comes with it because you never know what's going to happen when you're out there. And I, w I wasn't having fun my last fight. So getting to that point, I feel like I'm going to be able to get there a lot easier this fight, just the way my mind is and, and uh, the way I'm feeling. Steve, you said you're going to come into this fight a lot heavier. How's that coming on, building up your strength and punching sides? And how much weight are you going to be cutting in 
Um, right now, I woke, up, I woke up this morning about 184.5. I was walking around about 190. I didn't want to get over that. My second fight in the UFC, I was walking around over 200 pounds, and it about killed me. It was when I fought Matt Brown, and I told myself I'd never do that again. But it's a lot, it's a lot heavier than 182. And when I rehydrated, I only got back up to 178. I weighed myself before we left the hotel, before we even got to the venue, I was 178. So I was very small out there against a big welterweight and a strong, explosive welterweight. So, um, yeah, man, I'm mean, working with a gosh named uh, uh, Josh. Um, and um, he's been working with me, saw the benefits that he's been working with our guys back home, some of our team. And I'm like, they're staying the same weight, but man, they're much more faster and much more explosive. I'm going to try this guy out, and I've seen a big difference. Steve, I know you said you were kind of not looking forward to the chance of fighting George St. Pierre if he came back. Now he is back. Are you surprised he ended up fighting his middleweight, or are you kind of happy you don't have to fight him? Well, yeah, man, I mean, he was my inspiration, actually, switched from kickboxing to mixed martial arts. You know, I spent a lot of time in Montreal training with him, helping him out with a lot of his camps, and we have a good relationship, better relationship than me and Rory had. You know, we're closer than that. But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, um, that's something I don't think I would. I mean, he, he, he is the best welterweight of all time. And for him to go to 185, I knew he wants to try different things, either 155 or 185. Um, and uh, I'm happy for him, man. And I, I can't wait to see... George St. Pierre back out there again. How does the weight cutting process suck? Pretty bad. It, it, I mean, this thing's pretty bad. I mean, nobody likes the, the weight cut. You know, I, I try coming in about 185, so about 15 pounds a week of, and slowly work your way down. Um, my, the goal is, and I know other fighters have problems doing this, or, um, but I'll cut about 10 pounds, 12 pounds in about an hour. Easy peasy. <laughs> that was a treat. Actually, that was a treat. I've been working really hard. My weight was good. So my dad's like, one slice, man. You can have one slice. And I ate that thing so slow. I ate it so slow, just enjoying every minute of it, every piece of it. It was, it was phenomenal. And that's the one thing I crave is pizza. I crave pizza. After the fight, I'm taking the belt. We're going to get some pizza. You guys can come join me if you want to. What are some of the takeaways from the last fight? Sure, should have, would have, could have. Obviously, um, watch out for his right hand. He's got a mean right hand, and he's, he's fast. He's, I mean, everybody says he's explosive, but you really don't see it until you're out there. You know, he's a fast opponent, explodes in there, and, and uh, he's got good timing. I didn't realize his timing was that good. He actually hit me, uh, the second right hand, the one that put me down, in between exchanges as I was coming in. So I uh, learned a lot from that fight, man, and we know what we got to do going into this next fight. Don't want to give too much, but you know what? Uh, angles and counters. Angles and counters, baby. Keep it at the end of my feet. Look for that takedown. Uh, you never know. You may see a takedown from Steve Wonderboy Thompson out there. So, um, yeah, man, I know he's going to try and give me the take, try and tie me up eventually. And uh, just got to go out there and let it all out. You know, this is it. What did you learn about yourself? I mean, I'm assuming that you've never been hit that hard in a professional fight in kickboxing or anything else prior to it. What did you learn about yourself when you got hit by one of the You know, if it is one thing that I learned from that fight, it, it, and even though I didn't bring that belt home, I got a lot of uh, inspired people after watching that fight, you know, contact me, let me know, how, let, just letting me know how I inspired them after just pushing through that. Knowing that I can go out there and um, take those kind of shots and keep on going, that, that tells a lot about yourself, you know what I mean? It tells you that, you know, when you're put in that grind and that mindset where most people would give up, that you'll keep on going. So that tells me, any, and everybody else out there, whoever steps in the octagon with me is in for a rough night. You know what? Jake Ellenberger smoked me in the head. The I don't know if y'all remember that one. That was that one was probably uh, up there too. That one was up there. I mean, when Tyron hit me, I felt it and I kind of went numb, like ah, I'm going down. But I was still coherent. When Jake Ellenberger hit me, it was like black. I couldn't see anything. I was like scrambling for the air, you know. And um, yeah, so it was right up there, one of the one of the top, you know, skull punches of all time. I think of my of mine anyway. Anybody else? All right. Thanks, yes, sir. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.